Man, when you get hungry in the middle of the night, it's hard not to just think it's the parasites, I swear to God. And I even, um, I, I feel like I did an extra cut, uh, dose of black seed oil last night and a charcoal pill. And, and I, right before I went to bed, of course, somebody, or some person's video is sitting there talking about parasites and it's, uh, so it just is right on my head and then always is what is right on my head right when I wake up because then you're just like starving and it's like am I really starving though is it just the bugs inside of me god I swear to god you get on that side of uh, uh reality <laughs> with the people who are hyper focused on that it's like oh it's like we're just a fucking I don't understand either if we're a goddamn hologram how is it we just got all these goddamn worms? It doesn't make sense. Like, um, it just fucks with my head. And my stomach is growling and I'm starving. And I didn't go make any tea or anything. I was trying to see how that did with my stomach. Yesterday, I didn't even drink any tea. I just drank, well, I guess I drank tea because um, uh, matcha is some sort of tea leaves. So, and then I, um, so I just did this matcha chaga. I just did a bunch of blends without any black tea. So I thought, well, maybe it's the black tea is too acidic and it's just killing my stomach. Um, uh, but it is, it, it isn't it's like so bad all the time. I swear it has to do with whatever they are spraying on us. And it's so weird is so yesterday, you know, is the fourth is supposed to be the, uh, the big signal thing that everybody was so scared of. It was positive. They were going to die. There were so many people, uh, spiritual people and stuff. They were all like, uh, uh, uh they were all freaking out. Like going, one girl was like, she was just going to go to the beach. She was going to have this whole thing. Her phone was going to be here. It was going to be wrapped in tinfoil. She was going to be at the beach. She was going to have tinfoil on her hat. This, this whole long thing about all this stuff she was going to do. And um, I kept thinking, well, you know, if it really turned bad and you're out at the beach and all of they turn that on, even if it doesn't get your phone or whatever, and then it gets all the other people, then you got to fight through the zombie apocalypse to get home. It's like, does that even make sense? Are you thinking through your own fear? Because you're going to get yourself out there somewhere and it be surrounded by zombies. How are you going to get home? Somebody's going to eat you. <laughs> Seems like, I, to me, I was like, well, if it was really uncomfortable, I thought, we'll just walk outside. You know, it would be simple. But run the test. If it's like, Meh, I'm just, it's like, I'll just walk outside. And my door was open anyways. And it was, um, it wasn't like freezing, uh, cold. It was just kind of like still, it was the most weirdest, eerie fucking day. Even when me and Stella went out for a walk and then she got in trouble because she took off running after fucking Bert. Bert is such a fuckery. I swear to God, that cat. And, uh, so she goes tearing off the root into somebody's yard who the person who I think was the one who shot her with a BB anyways is like, Oh my God. But now he's always trying to come up and talk to her. So I don't, uh, but anyways, everything was so still. It was so still. There was no movement. There was nobody at anybody's houses. I kept thinking, maybe they fucking everybody's dead. I was out, I was standing out there walking still and it's like maybe we just die over and over we just bring ourselves back to life all the time maybe that's what it is we just keep rebirthing ourselves into this or something it's just uh and I, so i'm having all these weird thoughts while i'm out there standing and it's just totally still and i'm thinking you know what's going to happen when they put this uh sound thing on because i kept thinking you know i get them all the time where you can't hear them, but I feel them. And so I kept thinking, man, is it, am I going to feel this one? Is it going to be like really intense? And, um, 
So, I, you know, I kept trying to find stuff to do. I kept trying to find a movie, but everything was so weird. A couple of trucks drove by, and it was so fucking Truman Show. It was like these trucks I had never seen before, and they seemed like they were busy on their way to work or something. Like these, I was just, everything just seemed weird and out of sync. And then no people, no, I mean, those trucks driving by, but there wasn't like people walking. There wasn't, it was weird. It wasn't like any neighbors or anything. And so, um, then I was trying to find something to watch. And then, um, I, I was like, okay, so if it's going to be Eastern time, it's going to be like 11 here. So it's going to be like 1120, I think, or something. They said it was going to be like 220. And so I kept thinking, okay, well, after 1120, then once it's over, then, that will be it for the day. And, um, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And so then um, we're just sitting here on the couch. And um, Stella's laying on her bed. And um, all of a sudden she jumps up. And she starts listening and she starts barking. And then she runs out the door. And I could hear all of these other dogs barking. And so I walked outside on the porch right there, but I had the TV on and I had my phone sitting right here and I was only a few steps right there and I was standing on the porch and um, I was trying to hear like what the dogs were all barking about and you know, see like whenever the dogs all start barking, it's always like, oh, what's happening? And so then it just kind of stopped and I went back in and then I was thinking that's like 11, 18 and then, um, I went back in and they sat there and it got to be like 11.24. And I was like, well, I guess nothing's going to happen. Nothing. No beep. Nothing. I was like, weird. I wonder if some people got it and some people didn't get it. And so then I um, went on to see, you know, if other people got it. I think I I waited until because I thought, well, maybe it's 12.20. So I waited until it was like 12.30 or 1.00. And then I went on to look and see if other people had gotten it because I didn't ever get anything. And um, unless that, because everybody said it came two minutes early, which would have been when the dogs were barking. So some people must have got it because that probably was why the dogs were barking and all of a sudden all of them, and then she ran out, but nothing in my house. I didn't have any sound at all. And so I went on to go and see and, um, you know, and then I saw where, you know, Terry, me, 23, like there were some people who they had gotten it. And then on TikTok, there was tons of people and that, you know, it was like a whole thing, you know, turns into, you know, all the people who thought you were going to die, all the, you know, all this whole thing. And, um, but I saw this one girl and she was saying, uh, that she was really scared. She was, uh, oh, there's a hair going across my face. It's there, it's tickling my nose. Um, but she was really scared and she was at work and something, I don't know, there's all little stuff like, I was told these people turned on their phone for one minute and oh, it was going on right then and all, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, but she said it, uh, so she got really scared cause it started going while her phone was on and then all these people at work, his phones, and so she was scared or something, and then nothing happened, and so she was like, okay, well, I was fine then, nothing happened, and so then she left and was going home, and she said, but it's just kind of weird, because I have a, a headache and a stomach ache now, and uh, so then, you know, I could be totally, you know, could, could have been her nerves, I don't know, but I just thought, well, that's weird because that is what I've been having here. And, you know, and they don't have to do frequencies. Like, I'm not sure what the whole deal with the EBS. Like, we've got frequencies all the time. Like, it's never not been. I can hear them. Not only can I just hear them, I can feel them. Like, I can feel cars. I can feel things now. I don't just hear it. It's not something like something can sneak up on me. I can feel, got like it's weird. The more you get, uh, the more you tune into yourself, 
like like the the aspect of yourself that's real the more you become like tuned into this this other frequency this other world or something I don't know but I've always been able to hear the frequencies ever since I was a kid and now you know I hear all these people say well that's the spirits and stuff well they never tuned in like that to me they just talk so or show me pictures or whatever it is so it's not the um I don't think that frequency is that and uh I don't know. I've always, when I was a kid and I would hear it and I would always ask everybody if they could hear it. Nobody could hear anything. And it was so loud to me. And I, I, I've always been curious, you know, I, I don't really know why I can hear these frequencies so loud. And maybe this loud frequency I hear is something that is astral or something. And, um, but I get loud ones that get turned up. They just come jolting in. It's like, a, it feels like a spear going through your head or something. It, and it's like an energy and it's a sound and the sound has like a whole thing. And so I, I don't like it at all. <laughs> like it's right now I hear it just nonstop. It's like, I constantly have to overlook this loud high pitched sound that's always squealing in my ears and it's annoying as fuck and it comes in all different kinds of um pitches all the time but it's never I don't know what it would seem like to just have quiet to just be quiet I, I heard that abrupt thing before you know like when you have everything on in the house and then the uh, electricity goes out in that complete quietness there for a second. But I don't know if I, I've ever had quietness in my head. So it's, um, but I sure have noticed it of late. <laughs> like this nonstop and then always talking about their frequencies and stuff. But so to me, I mean, it's weird how they have this rain thing come anyways. The, the weather is so jacked up here. It's like, I, I don't even get why they are even telling us it's going to be one thing. I mean, they may as well just not tell us anything. They may as well just tell us cloudy every day. Why even try and say it's going to be anything other than that? And then some days, it's just like no sun. Just dead ass no sun. No light. It's just eerie. And it just it feels like, like yesterday. It just feels this cold it's like death or something. I don't know. It's so eerie. And, um, and it's also strange is here where I'm at, uh, we have not had like a huge disaster. It's like, it seems like it's always building up to one and nothing happens. We haven't even had our power go out very much. Like it's very strange. And, um, like parts of some things just seem to just keep going just like nothing Nothing's going on in the world. Just, you know, we're here in the twilight zone. Um, but there must be weird shit. Like, just the town over, they're out there. Somebody's out there staging the streets. So, I don't know. This is, uh, I, I, when I, you don't go out or you're in a small place, it is, um, it's like you lose perspective or something. It's just, it's, a, it's just strange because it's like one thing here and then it's like all these other things everywhere else. Like I just saw there's a big giant uh, evacuation going in Arkansas right now, I guess. There's a big giant fire that just broke out some explosion or something. They're evacuating around, I think around a mile. So who knows, the fire looks giant, it just happened. So I'm sure they're gonna take it somewhere in, uh, Oklahoma and Texas had big storms last night. I don't know how the devastation, but I sure saw videos of people freaking out as they were coming. And, um, but to me here, it's like a, we're under a drug study or something. You know, like I've all, like I've well, always, I've always said since I was a child, and I've said through this stuff is in Washington state that I feel like 
the, the, the artificial, I feel like they interfere with the weather and that they have so many people on so many drugs here. So many people on antidepressants and stuff. It's just a thing because there's so much rain. And so I thought, you know, this is a heavily tested area on pharmaceuticals. So, I mean, wouldn't surprise me at all. You're just a little outskirt town that they would be, you know, well, let's see what happens if we put this on them. Let's see what happens if we put that on them. Let's see what happens if we do this, if we do that. As that's what I feel like that they're always doing or something. But when we were out walking yesterday, again, it was weird, just weird. But then all of a sudden, I just felt drugged again. I felt like, oh, my gosh. And it had a weird smell. It keeps being these really weird smells. And um, I was like, I don't, I, 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 you know, when it happens, it's just like, oh, I just want to get home. I just want to go back to my house. God, this is so fucked. I'm not even fucking safe to go and walk outside. You're just constantly being drugged out here or poisoned or whatever the fuck they're doing. And, um, uh, the, um, there was something else I was going to say about that. Uh, but anyways, I started feeling, um, sick, but I've felt sick for days this whole time. Whenever they do this raining stuff on us, I know it is putting some sort of chemicals or something. And then the headache in the, um, the stomach ache and, um, and you can have different kinds of stomach ache. This is like way up at the top, but you can have it where you've just got just diarrhea, diarrhea and for no reason. And so, oh, cause while I was out there, yeah, I was, I was so frustrated and I was just like thinking what in the hell? I mean, they've been gassing people. They've been poisoning through war, through all these different places. Like, it was such a big thing to me during Vietnam that stuck out. And so, uh, I don't, it's just not a big stretch to me like that they're sitting here doing this to us. They've been doing it to people for, since I was a kid. As I was a kid during Vietnam and the stuff that I was seeing on the news was on the news all the time. It was like everything and life revolved around the v Vietnam then in America. And uh, you know what's weird too is there, I just saw this uh, in English guy and he was saying uh, whenever he says he's post that he always gets attacked by all these Americans. And they'll all come in and they'll start telling him, yeah, well, 1776, we're going to take it back, you know, and all this stuff. And he's always like, what the fuck are they talking about? He said it was just getting so weird because he would have so many of them do that. And he was like, what are they talking about? So he went and looked it up, 1776. And he said, um, it said it was the American uh, Revolution. And, uh, so he's looking up about it and stuff and he's like, well, that's weird. Why didn't I ever even hear of this? And so, <laughs> and so he goes, um, uh, he goes and he looks up, uh, what's taught in, uh, um, English schools about, uh, American revolution and, and zero, nothing, nothing is taught. <laughs> he's like, you know, we don't know anything about this. We weren't taught that. He's like, I thought that was weird. Cause he thought kept, he's like, I, I thought maybe I was, uh, just didn't pay attention in school. And, but no, they don't even teach us about that. But see, I already learned about that when I went to Spain and we're going around and they were got totally, we're all taught different histories. <laughs> like you go travel around and find out we're all taught different histories. Like, so it is, I mean, that's just fucking absurd. Like, it's supposed to be the other people that we fought in this big war we had to free ourselves. That's where we got freedom. That's why we don't get taxed. Like, that's in our imagination. <laughs> it's, it's, it, some of this stuff is just so absurd. It's so silly. But anyways, I got a kick out of that. That was hilarious. Because, yeah, that was the same thing in Spain. You know, they're the ones who sent out Christopher Columbus and he never reported back ever finding anything out about America. He never went there. <laughs> they don't know anything about that. He was busy in South America. He wasn't a nice guy, but he was busy in South America. 
He wasn't over in the Americas. That was somebody else. They just they just make up shit. <laughs> they just make shit up for America. They just were like, well, we're just going to have all these little lab babies. We're going to try and uh, intermingle them with all these tribe people. Because what are we going to do with all these tribe people? And then uh, they just, they tried to, uh, it, but whatever they tried to do, it just didn't work. It, you know, the, yeah, well, they have to just keep going further because they want a mindless, you know, society that's just easily bossed around that is, I don't know, a bunch of sex perverts. I can't believe the amount of busts going on. And now that Florida has come out and said it's the death penalty for all the crimes against the little ones. It doesn't matter if your dad and you were messing with your kid. Well, I guess you shouldn't have done that because now it's a death penalty. <laughs> Told you that was coming. Yeah, it's about, man, there's about to be some serious shit. And, and the thing in Chicago, see, all these things keep getting overturned, too. Like, uh, we don't have to have licenses. All these things that they try to put in to control us and stuff, it's going to keep falling away and falling away and falling away. At, at the same time, it's like a fucking... It's like they've thrown everything in the goddamn blender and it's just swirling around. There's so much going on. Uh, but, you know, I saw another huge giant. There's so much going on with the uh, the migration. And uh, definitely they are not all just lines and lines of men. There is families coming. Tons of family. Little kids. And not little kids that all just look like, you know, somebody walking with six that are all like, Burr. no, these kids are jumping around, playing, jumping, like, like they're on their dad, their uncle, their mom, like tons. I mean, as far as the lines go and, uh, there's something weird going on about all the ones that were riding the top of that train. They've stopped it in Mexico and all these people dressed alike are holding the train and won't let it go. So it looks like some sort of a militant action or something. I'm not sure what's happening there. But I, uh, when I was looking at some of those videos last night of all of these people just keep coming and coming and coming, I was like, I've got to look at this uh, map again. Because this one where it's just showing all of these people coming from Venezuela all going to Chicago, which, you know, they did bring, you know, what? They did go there and empty out some jails and bring them over. So there is that. There is the certain people brought certain people here to be the instigators, the criminals, you know. They are foot soldiers, the ones that keep our lives hard and troubled. So they're all over the place. But when I'm, when I was looking at the doomsday map, I was trying to figure out, like, where are these is Venezuela just not going to be there or all these places not going to be there? But it's hard to see on, on a lot of the parts. It's weird. Cause it seemed like there was, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like all our phones show different things. Cause I've seen people arguing now where you know, there's no information about it and the other people pulling up information. So I think our phones, are, I don't know, there's something weird about what our information is that we'll get. And so uh, all of my doomsday maps are weird right now. They're not like I can't see the words good and there's not as many of them. And then you try and zoom in. It's weird. I don't know. And it's not the, especially over there on like South America and Central America and in there. So it looks like mostly Brazil is going to be left, but I don't know how much is going to be gone, but it looks like mostly that's that whole, that's all that's left over there is a couple of little things and some of Brazil. And, um, it, you know, when I was really zooming in, most of uh, Europe is going to be gone. I don't know what's going to go on, but most of Europe is going to be gone. Uh, it's going to be like some islands. There's going to be some little islands scattered around. Of a lot of different places, there's going to be a lot of islands. It, it seems like we're going to have more islands. The land masses are all going to change so drastically. And uh, I just saw last night another thing on the news about that. Uh, it was somebody sharing a clip, and it was about Africa. 
and they were talking about that the the earth is changing right now it's going through this big drastic change and it's quite obvious because africa is split in half and so this is this is i know this is real and i swear to god i feel like that is why they're bringing so many people uh, there's something and i don't think that they're telling them like oh you know your country's gonna be underwater so you gotta hurry there's something else like they're drawing him in somehow I, you know I'm, I'm not sure since we're not there if we're not in that country and we don't know what's being said to motivate this mass amount of people to all be going to a place with no job no place to go or anything and it's like you know do they not have news about what's going on in, in America but uh, you know I I know so many people are so desperate to go somewhere. I mean, people are shifting around all over the place right now. People are leaving their countries and going. Uh, to me, my, uh, to me, like I have the motivation and stuff, but I know that things will open up. There will be more of a direction. Like every time, like I try and take a step forward in something. It, there will be some place to land, you know, there will be something that will open up. So it's not like you have to force something. And just keep that in mind because it feels, I know that like people are taught that you have to force it. You have to make life. You have to do this. You know, you have to learn how to relax in it, learn how to sit back, learn how to just take a breath and allow life to play out. And so, you know, like I could get all built up and panicky and like, oh my God, we're due for our storm and none of these people are awake. It's coming, it's coming. You know, I could get myself all, uh, but I sit here and I look out and I'm like, oh my God, my house is like magical. God, I love this place. And I'm really excited because I, um, I, I just feel like that there's nothing that they have to stand on at this point. Like, no matter what the fight becomes over the house, there's I, there's no way they're going to get it. I don't think, I think the courts, I, I think it's obvious that the courts are all going to go on our side because uh, just this whole big thing of uh, Trump and this judge and the stuff he's saying and stuff, this is going to be revealing so much corrupt judicial, so many of these corrupt judges are going down. And at the same time, we have these ones making these giant, things you know debt's illegal it's not legal to have you, you can't ask people for driver's licenses you don't have to have a driver's license we don't have any licenses we don't have licenses on our cars licenses on this and then they got to get to you know got to have the insurance then you got to have the loan and got to have this all this shit and give me your papers they pull you over give me your papers it's like i don't have to give you shit dude and it, but see you got to know the codes and stuff if you're going to try and play that game and um, one guy who I saw, he was ballsy. He was like going 85 miles per hour using their roadways and then saying he's not going to follow their laws. I was like, ooh, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> it's like, I feel like oh, I'm using their roadways. I better best be just uh, following the rules of the roadways. You know, if they've got these rules and these psycho um, enforcers out here that are going to be enforcing the laws and that's just getting crazier and crazier like the stories that are blowing up with that stuff too all the things are going to keep blowing up because it's like all the different people's stuff has to play out and so it's everything has to still um uh play out for people to wake up and my nose is so runny too i'm so stopped up and um, I just, I got like a reason I'm even up is I'm just I'm so sore. I can't sleep. I'm just like my joints hurt. And I just, I just know it's, uh, whatever poison that they're putting on us, whatever it is. I don't know. And if it is old stuff that's still coming out of the skies, I don't know. Whatever it was, it was intended to make us sick. And it does make you sick. It just depends on, you know, what you do with the sickness. <laughs> they bank on you going to them for the cure, which I am not. I'll sit here and uh, whatever. I'll treat myself until I don't have anything left to treat. Um, but 
Okay, so let me think. Because I feel like I'm bouncing all over the place. So, the, um, so, you know, they've got all this stuff coming out. Like, um, there's just, there's so much stuff. Like, every, uh, it just seems like there's so many people sharing. It's just like, their local news, uh, headlines. It's just like, just arrest after arrest, crazy thing after crazy thing. Crazy stuff going on in people's families and, Oh my gosh, all sorts of nutty stuff. Like there's all this drama of on TikTok as this kid who killed people at his school and um when he was younger, you know, he got out of jail way way early and he's got a whole like he's becoming like an influencer or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff like that this the system will promote is the, these people that they, you know, and that's what becomes frustrating for other people who are trying to do good in the world. And then these social media platforms promote people who are trying to keep people, I don't know, I don't, I, who knows what they're trying to do with him. Just keep people angry, just keep people arguing and pissed off and want get, bringing that vindictive, vengeful side out in people that like that you see all these sides that they're bringing out in people with all of these actions they're taking but it is up to the person you got to recognize those sides when they come up <clears throat> you got to catch them and you got to see you know like if you find yourself getting steamed you find yourself getting pissed off and stuff go in deeper and see like why are they, you know, getting me to be mad and angry and vindictive towards other human beings because they are trying to keep me divided? And so keep noticing that and then go into yourself and look at your biases because that's what they play on. They build up biases in their programming in you and then they play them up in your, so it feels, you know, like it's important to you, you know, like, <clears throat> but it's all programming. And so you got to see it because otherwise it was whipping you around uh, your emotionally, you know, they've got control over you because they just, uh, they're leading you by your emotions. They're leading you. Uh, it's like an emotional roller coaster too. They got you over here. They got you over there and they just want to keep you mad and divided and defeated feeling. But, you know, I think when we look at it logically, that uh, the map is changing or saying it on some news is our news is not going to talk a lot about it because uh, we are still in the midst. We still got uh, frack, fang, sang, uh, uh, I can't think of that word, frack, frank, we still have, we still have bad people who are out there working. <laughs> we're still in the midst of the takedown, um, but we're in the, you know, uh, to me, it's like we're in the big sting operation. It's like, uh, this big sting operation was going to go all of a sudden at once. And, and so it's like pff, all these different things happening at once. And so it's like, it's just a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff to process and a lot of a lot of hostile energy out there. But um, with the um, immigration and stuff, like I think that there's more going on, way more going on than what they're saying. And um, just looking at those maps and seeing where they're bringing all these people from, I really think that they are doing some sort of evacuation because this was going on in Africa. And I'm not sure because we don't get all the facts and stuff. You just see clips here and there. But I had seen, uh, I swear it was, it was before the split. Uh, and I know I talked about it. Like if we went back and checked all the footage, but I've got so many fucking videos. But uh, I think it was... Um, last year maybe at this time or a little bit after i would say it was been within 12 months and um it seems like it was sudan and it seemed like there was a couple places 
and they were evacuating all the people from there and moving them somewhere else. And so I was like, huh, that's interesting because I was paying attention to that. And then the big split happened. And so it's like, huh, so some of this stuff where they seem like you're evacuating for one reason, but are they evacuating for another reason? And uh, because, I mean, especially in watching all these old movies about how it's such a thing to them is how humans panic about stuff. And then it just keeps showing too. Like they really do. Like you, you say something, you know, they'll run down to Walmart and start punching each other out, trying to get the last roll of toilet paper or something. They do freak out. They don't know how to keep themselves calm. They don't know how to maintain and manage their own emotional state. And that's one of the big problems why we have all of these children raising other children. Like we don't have grown ups out there. We don't have a lot of grown ups. We've got a lot of damaged people running around trying to pretend to be grown ups. And and then all that is is putting rules on themselves. So the um uh so there is a thing where they don't want to just say, you know, a, a mass evacuation fear tactic like everybody has to leave California right now. Like, it would turn into such an ordeal. Like, I, they have to do it in, like, increments. It, you know, everybody who's outraged over taxes, everyone who's outraged over the schools, everyone who's outraged over the crime, everyone who's outraged over the houses and the prices, the inflation, everyone who's outraged over the lack of jobs, you know. So they do these big jolts these big moves of uh you know to piss people off to get them to move and so i think that there's a lot of that going on in some places and that could be what's going on by my place too i don't know i just feel like that uh when the universe wants me to go they're going to make it really clear because i already put it out there you know and i know that they'll the the universe just does it once you once you are and it's weird because it's already written but it's like once you become in alignment it's once you get into alignment with you and because everything is going to happen no matter what you're trying to control it's going to happen the way it's going to happen that's why you know like all these people who think they're on their best timeline and their manifesting's not working and they're frustrated and stuff like that it's like no, that's all these weird teachings that people are teaching. You got to go and look more into that and figure out your perception, how you perceive timelines, how you perceive these things, not through somebody else because there's a distortion. These people are have a weird interpretation because they don't have a full uh, a full view of all spirituality stuff. They haven't gone and done, they haven't I, there's just so many people who have not gone through the seeking process throughout before the awakening throughout life if you are were awakened spiritually there was a process that you would do you there wasn't people to go like uh, jesus christ if you were out there you know telling people that you were chosen and shit you'd have been locked up like <laughs> i mean this is like a new thing where people even accept this crazy talk like, believe you me, you try to talk anything spiritual before, people look at you side-eyed side, side, <laughs> side uh, because they think you're mental. They're, <laughs> like, rolling their eyes at everybody else, like, okay, crazy person over here is talking. And so, um, I bet, uh, you, you know, you were a seeker. You had to go out and seek the knowledge that you looked for. You wanted to understand more about what you were feeling what you were interpreting, what you were understanding, you had to go out and seek. And, you know, like like I said, I've been seeking since I was a kid, reading spiritual books, you know, self-help, all that kind of stuff. And um, so even to the point where I was made fun of because I was reading weird books. I wasn't reading, you know, you, if you're going to read books, you got to read fiction, like weirdo. Um, so, um, anyways, the, now, 
with this new awakening thing, you've got all these people who were suddenly waking up to their spirit and then they are all in ego. So they think they've got all the answers. They think they're the expert on everything and anything that comes in their mind, they think that it is their, you know, they're talking to God himself and stuff and they don't realize how much stuff goes on in here. Like, you got to uh, probably have not only just a party, but you're probably at a masquerade party. You probably don't know who the fuck you're talking to. And you've got to, you know, there's more to spirituality than just, I've even seen this girl and I thought she was highly spiritual, but I don't know. It seemed like, she, you know, maybe she was more into the cult before. Uh, I'm not sure. She has a really cool um, content that she does, it's like she does, she's got these tattoos on her face, and then she wears a hood a lot, and she talks about, like, history, and, uh, like, stuff, I, I don't know, she has, she tells some cool stuff, and, um, and I guess, and I don't see her all the time, like, uh, I'll just see her go by, and, um, but she was using, uh, like, I have a pendulum, like pendulums that will talk, the energy can use it and it can tell yes or no. But then you got to wonder who's guiding the energy. So even when you are in contact, then you don't know who's guiding the energy. And then you, if you just rely on that, then you're relying on something outside of you. And so, um, and it can be manipulative. It's not like demons and stuff like what people think but it is the same kind of behaviors it is the behaviors what people think of as being demons but it can be tricksters it can be you know it's not just because it's trying to steal your soul so um this uh um she was saying that she wasn't going to be using it anymore because she's lost trust with her uh spirit she was, she said, I was catching her in too many lies and stuff. And so that's the thing is, um, you know, when you're like, I don't know how long she's been spiritual or whatever, but I was that other girl too. I saw last year who was doing that. She was all spiritual and she was talking to uh, the spirit that came and told her that it was a land spirit. And she's like in Ireland or something. And it, it, it said it was a spirit of this land and had been there for a long time. And so she's like, starts talking to it and it starts, uh, she thinks she's getting like the answers to the world. She's asking all these wonderful questions. She thinks she's got this real rapport with this uh, spirit, uh, this land spirit. And so she's just chit chatting with it all the time. And then she starts noticing it's, uh, trying to separate her from other people. It's trying to um, keep her isolated. So then she starts questioning, okay, what's up with this spirit? And then um, then she finds out, well, she go, I think she even goes to the priest or something of their village. And he said, um, uh, she should not be speaking to that. It's tricking her. And, um, so then she goes and she finds out that it's a trickster and it's been tricking her and, and that, that's what these energies do. They want to just suckle off your energy. Like it, it, it doesn't matter about what it's talking about to you. It just wants your energy. It wants your attention. And especially to me, you don't just go and just do like all these fucking things I see walking around and trying to sometimes like right recently over the past week, I feel like, are they trying to spook me? Like what the fuck is going on? Uh, you don't start talking to them. You start, don't start acknowledging them. You don't start like interacting inter, that's like interdimensional reacting, reacting with them. Like, no, I'm not going to sit and talk to them and stuff. Um, the people who I talk to are talking in here. So it's not like, uh, like if those, if, if, if any of these things are trying to contact through talking to me, then they have to go through here. This is more of a, a gatekeeper. 
And so when you start getting managing your mind, then you will have a gatekeeper that doesn't like, I'm not going to say like, Oh, I could never be tricked or something. You know, I just have, uh, where I've just been talking to him for my whole life, you know, it'd be like, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. It'd be like, to have it be like your grandparents for your whole life. And then all of a sudden, I, I mean, you would know them even if they were in another room or something. It's like, you, you, there's just, there's a energetic recognition. There's like an energy you will recognize. Um, it, I don't know how to, uh, you know, the people I've been talking to, it's just like, I, I don't know. It's just so natural at this point. Like uh, even to the point where I didn't even know it was that I was doing anything. So it's just, just talking. And um, so I know I can't be tricked by, you know, like I can recognize other uh, ones talking. Like it all comes in. It's like different tones or different pitches, different sounds, different feels. It, it, it has its own thing. So, um, but there's a lot of people who I think when they start breaking through to the other side and they're hearing that they don't realize it, that there's a lot of talking that goes on in there. There's a lot of um, communication. It's like a communication board. It's like a an operator, like you, you really like an operator uh, the old fashioned kind constantly having to plug in, unplug, plug in, unplug. Because yeah, this is like a, a whole motherboard of information going on. But you have to learn to manage it and you have to learn, you know, what it's all about. And so, anyways, as these people like wake up and then they think that they're super spiritual and they think they've got all these answers. But they're just beginning. They're just starting their quest. It's just as crazy. I, I saw someone saying, yeah, you think I just woke up? No, I woke up a year and a half ago. It's like, what the hell? That's what I mean. These people, like, they woke up. They've been awake a year and a half. And they are, you know, it's like, fuck, I've been watching this shit go on. For years now, like this is, uh, and, uh, and you still wake to certain things. You still keep waking up to certain things. What was it yesterday? There was something that was just like, oh my God. Um, you know, this world is just as very different than what we ever thought it was. You know, what we were trained, what we were taught it was. And it's just very different. And, and so it's, but definitely, you know, these people who they just woke up and then they think they're the experts and then they're out talking and, and then out talking to spirits and it's different than just talking to spirits. Like that's a whole another thing, you know, uh, the people who are mediums who talk to spirits uh, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, that's not what I do. Uh, I mean, I can talk to spirit, like I can pick up on that. Like I can pick up on, um, like that one haunted house. Like I can always pick up, like, cause I've lived in so many haunted houses. I can pick up on their, their energy, but I don't sit there and talk to them. I can pick up on like what they're feeling, like attention, an anger or something like you can feel a feeling but yeah I'm gonna sit there and talk to them the one um but I, like the one when I was a kid like I could pick up on that he would watch over me the one and when I was a teenager that other house I could pick up on that one wanted to kill me and he tried I mean he couldn't do anything as he was a ghost but I felt him get on top of me. I felt him trying to suffocate me. Uh, uh, it was like he was using a pillow or something and holding it over and trying to suffocate me. 
and um, and I couldn't move. I was stuck. I was frozen, and I could feel him on top of me, and I could feel this heaviness, and it, it felt like he was really sweaty too. It, it's weird how the energy can still be putting out an energy of the you know, it's like persona. This is like what I said when I had come out of my body that time. And um, I felt exactly the same. There was nothing. There was not one single thing that happened where I thought, hmm, something's weird. Other than the how everything looked. How everything looked smoky. Everything looked gray and smoky. That was the only thing. where I, And I thought, I just, uh, I thought there was just smoke. And I, so I was trying to smell and see if I smelled something. And I didn't smell anything. And then um, I was like, it's so weird. Uh, but then when I turned around and I saw myself laying there and it zapped back in there real quick. But uh, that that real part of me, that, that part of me that was out, that um, that energy that I am. And so that guy, the one who wanted to kill me, uh, he was just really angry, mean, creepy guy. I don't know who he was. I don't know if he was somebody who ever lived in that house. I don't know if it was somebody. I mean, he was definitely a, a, an older person, like an adult male. He wasn't an old man, and he wasn't a young man. He was more like 35 or something. And he was, um, I could see him. I could see he had dark hair. I could see he was overweight. Um, like why would when he would be around, I could see an image in my head. And um, but when he was sitting on top of me, and I could feel, I could, I could feel him, and uh, that sweaty, wet kind of, and I could feel his anger and how much he didn't, you know, I, my, my there was a lot of teenage girls. And my mom, you know, she was a teenager herself, practically. And then she's married this guy who was super young. He was drunk, drunk all the time. It was very chaotic at that house. And that kind of stuff really feeds the spirits. Like, uh, houses can have a lot of activity when there's teenagers. Because there's just so much t uh, angst or whatever. The house that I had when my girls were teenagers was like, oh my God, it was fucking crazy it was so much spirits it was mental and uh there was other people in my house that could see them not just me and um oh it was active there was so much going on all the time and it was it was crazy that house was crazy but i've lived in so many crazy haunted houses uh there's nothing, you know, even when they want to come up and kill you, there's nothing that they can do. They're just spirits that are kind of like just trapped. Like their consciousness is just kind of trapped. Like they don't, they're not, like they don't have to stay stuck. They can break free, which is like trapped in their own emotion or something. Like that guy, like that guy who was, um, hated us all trapped in him. He was like trapped in this. It was some sort of anger. I don't know where his anger came from. The one guy who, when I was a teenager, um, he was trapped in this, uh, I don't know. It was, it was maybe guilt because of the situations in his own house where his daughter had gone crazy and uh, tried to burn the house down. And then he had a son that had, he had, there was so many problems with that family. And then they ended up all getting murdered. It was like, oh my gosh. Um, but um, I feel like there was something, because then he's the one who killed himself in the house. And he was a music conductor, or a, a, he was a pianist. He wrote, whatever that's called. He would write music, he was a pianist. And he had a music room downstairs, and it was soundproof room. And we would go in that room all the time. It was um, eerie, but he was, um, he just was uh, um, unsettled. 
like an unsettled spirit. He'd walk around all the time. You'd hear him walking around. He'd always be messing with the dishes. And that was back when we'd have cleaning people at the house and they would all freak out and run from the house and stuff. But people will always be scared of him. But he, um, he, he was not, I mean, he just was unsettled. Like he had unfinished business, but it's like he didn't know what the business was. And then when we moved in, there was another teenage girl. Like, I, I, I know that house has ended up being burnt down, like all sorts of shows. Um, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully, I think I even heard that they did a, 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 a exorcism or something at that house. There's been a lot of weird stuff at that house after we moved out, uh, but it ended up burning down. So I don't know. Um, like, but in the consciousness, they don't need the physical thing. In the, you're still in the space in your own consciousness. So whether the house was there or not, he could still be going around in it because he's still in that space. If you see what I'm saying. So even if um, there's not a house there to him, his spirit, like there's spirits that are out there that are just in, a, in the land that we think, but there's nothing there, but there's something there to them, just not to us. So that, um, um, but that one, um, he, he seemed like trapped like that. The woman who was so um, creepy, because that was another creepy one I had, was that one house where the woman, and she uh, was divisive towards me. And I think she was kind of stuck because she had died and she had left her husband. And she still felt like she needed to take care of her husband. And then she got confused when we moved in because of my husband and she just focused on him all the time and he was so whacked and she was always on his side so she was never protecting me and as a matter of fact she got me super super sick and um uh she died from a respiratory illness and because i asked the neighbors i said what what did she die from because i got so sick with some respiratory illness I was so fuck. I got so sick. That's where I got E. coli. I was sick all the time when I was living in that house. But the the lung infection thing, when I moved in, and then uh, I was so sick, and they were giving me all this stuff, and then um, they checked, and they said I had strep, and they said uh, it was the weirdest thing because uh, usually adults don't get strep in their 50s for the first time. And so I was having just tons of illness and I knew it was coming from her. I don't know how that works like that, but I knew it was coming from her. And, um, but I got better, but she kept being trying to, it was weird. She would shut the door. Like if he would go in the other room, she would shut the door between us. It was just constant, constant stuff. It was really weird. Um, so she was still stuck on something. Uh, there's just something that is like this, the energy just gets stuck. Like they're on replay. Like they don't know how to, it's not like you can just become a ghost. Well, I guess you can become a ghost if you get stuck. You just get stuck and you don't, you, you're just, you're trapped in your own mind kind of. It's, um, I don't know. It's like they block out seen I I don't know uh, I'm I, it's how it how it goes down but there's definitely spirits that get stuck here and I don't know if, if stuck is the right word even if it's kind of like they trap themselves by replaying their um their fears their sadness their resentment see that's the kind of stuff that will hold you it will hold you back but any other time that you're held back for it, you're working through it. So there's nothing that you can ever do wrong as a soul. There's no mistake you'll ever make. Everything you do is going to be exactly the right thing at the exact right time. The only problem is, is that you judge yourself and you decide. And usually your judgment is based on other people's 
you know, what other people think. It, but there's going to be so much shifting around about so much of this stuff. Like, there's going to be people who, you know, who are all on this spiritual journey. will start their spiritual, start a spiritual journey. Their own spiritual journey. Not just this, uh, you know, the race to ascension journey of spirituality. Where it's like, no, you got to do this. No, you got to be a vegan. No, you better do this. And it's like they're all racing to get to it. It's like, you guys, you got to be working on yourselves. You got to sit back and relax. You got to go with the flow. You got to get in harmony with life. You got to, uh, you know, deal with you, work on you, heal you. Those are the things that raise your vibration is letting go of things, letting go of the things that you hold on to that hold you back, that hold you down. That's the chains that bind you. That's the, that's holding all the skeletons in the closet. So it's releasing that. Letting it go, you know, of some of those ghost people, if they would have let go of shit, then they probably wouldn't have been trapped there. They'd have probably been on to their next incarnation or celebrating with their friends up in Deadsville. So, you know, there's different things you can do. Like you don't have to just uh this this life isn't is all encompassing as what people believe it to be. It's just it's like if you took a, a beautiful jewel that had mm, just full of different facets and stuff, and you tried to say that the one facet of that jewel was the one that mattered. That that facet right there, that is the one that makes this whole jewel. That's, that's that one. It's all of it together. Just like uh, one big uh, thing that seems to be a common thing that people are saying right now is... um. If I wouldn't have made any mistakes, I wouldn't even be me. Like mistakes are what is makes you who you are. So um, mistakes aren't really mistakes. Mistakes aren't really bad. Mistakes are growing. Mistakes are part of the journey. So, you know, it's like a, a different way to look at mistakes, you know. But that is where uh, we're having so many people who are starting to realize, you know, because that's coming into alignment with yourself. To see, like, yeah, well, if I wouldn't have made those mistakes, then who would I even be? I wouldn't even be this person. I learned from all those things. I grew through all of these tra uh, these traumas and these uh, these um, problems that I've encountered through my life. That has made me who I am. And then, so you're growing and accepting yourself and falling in love with yourself. To where you, you know, you love yourself. And that's what is sad when I see these girls who are still trapped back and not going towards falling in love with themselves, still standing back and holding for somebody else to come in and tell them they're okay. And that is only for a brief moment because those people are looking for somebody to make them feel okay. So it's just these people who are trying to find somebody to make them feel okay, but they're putting out that energy and they're getting it back. So it's not, it is not going to give them what they want in the long run because what they want is loyalty, dedication, somebody to uh, be there for them, take care for them. But this person wants it too. So until you can do it for yourself, there's always going to be this need of somebody else doing it for you and always feeling dissatisfied. Nobody's ever going to fulfill your needs like you, you know what you need, you know what you want. It's not anybody else's responsibility to take care of you, but it's just our toxic society, you know, has built this kind of thing up between, um, I would say men and women, but I think it's, I think it's in all, I don't think, I think it's like genderless. It's more of a coupling, more of a toxic coupling where people think like you got to go out, you got to look for your partner and uh, you know, you got to come up with the boxes of what you're looking for and it's uh we've just we've been going about everything all backwards, all in a dysfunctional way. And yeah, anyways, it is the more that you go and you just lean into I think it's important to lean into yourself. I think it's 
uh, to learn to, who you are, to become your true authentic self. That is one thing too, where I've seen a lot of people lately talking about that they have started realizing how much they are masking themselves, how much they hide themselves um, in different things. So if you're noticing that, be happy. Don't be like, shame on you. You're so stupid. I can't believe you hide yourself. Don't be like that. It, uh, catch yourself and see. So you can be like, okay, so when I get in this situation, then I always feel like I've got to put on some kind of front. I've got to pretend like I'm not me. I've got to be a people pleaser. I've got to try and make people think I'm nicer or funnier than I am, whatever it is that you're trying to put on to this group of people. That is when you got to go in and start trying to understand yourself. What in this group of people draws that out of you? Why do you feel like you have to try and please these people? Because that's where you get to the jewel is to try and figure out like why you react the way you react. And, you know, it could be uh, this group of people reminds you of something that happened to you in kindergarten and you don't even realize it. And so, you know, this traumatic thing that happened during dodgeball and you don't realize it, but you go into this situation and this couple of grouping of these people remind you of something. It makes you uncomfortable and you feel like you have to be a certain way. And uh, But when you go in and you see like, oh, God, these people remind me of this situation when I was in kindergarten and I got hit with this dodgeball and all the kids laughed at me. It can be something so, you know, anything. And But you got to go deeper into it. You got to just ask yourself, why are you feeling this way? What is triggering this feeling? You know, or why are you um, reacting in the way you're reacting? It's just to ask yourself more questions. That's how you learn yourself, learn to understand yourself. You become better. You become more uh, who you want to be rather than just, you know, doing it because you don't even know why. I don't know why I just did that. I don't know why I just said that. Instead, you know exactly, you know, why you said the things you say. You know exactly what you mean by them. There's no, you know, and it's a healthier place to be in your mind. You'll feel better. You'll feel more um sure of yourself but you've got to work towards it and you go through some periods of time where you'll feel super vulnerable you'll feel totally like embarrassed embarrassed to be you you know and you got to just push through that and you know who cares who cares about so much of the stuff i i really feel like we got to get back to that side of us of when we're kids you know when we're out to just have fun and experience life and do silly things and enjoy it, you know, go out and build a fort for the day and, you know, live in the fort for that day or whatever weird shit that we did when we were kids and then go back to living where we got to have fun experiences and adventures and just do silly things just for doing them. That's what I think we're going to get back to life about. Get out of this structured, pretend, artificial you know, you got to be here, you got to do that, and all of the things that we have been trained into it is all to keep this world afloat. We were the ones that were like dog paddling ourselves to exhaustion to keep this place afloat. But now it's all falling apart, you know, now it's all coming out. These perverts, these child stealers, and all these weirdos that were out there running the world. And, uh, and I can't believe how many of them keep getting busted on <laughs> the full house. You get uh, 160 people busted and then you get 100 people who are set free. It's like, what in the hell? You guys got one in a stash at all times? You got somebody in the closet all the time? Like, what the fuck? This is odd. This world. And how many kids recently who have gone missing now, we're just going to have them popping up in everybody's closets everywhere? It's like fucking mental. Uh, and then probably we'll have some popping up like five states away. And then we'll be like, how did they get there? Well, we're going to have a whole thing of like figuring out this whole 
uh, Underground Railroad. Well, there was an underground submarine, but Underground Railroad they had going, just moving these kids around under in the tunnels and all this shit. So all that's got to go up there mainstream. So we'll have some of that coming out. There's, they've already got. It's weird how they keep saying now they've got found all these Hawaiian kids, and um, and all this is going on Oprah. Like, all, all the people, when they bring them out onto the main stage, they're bringing them to, uh, to, uh, there, it's like two things come out on the main stage. It is, uh, you, you're exposed, basically. You're exposed for who you are. And so, it's weird, too, because, um, all these people, you know, lots of videos, I would imagine it's on Twitter, too. I don't know. but It's on TikTok where people say um, Jim Carrey is playing uh, Joe, is one of the people playing Joe. And so this was, this video was like a podcast. It's like two podcasters talking. And they, uh, no, it's like a podcaster questioning somebody. And the guy was saying that, um, all these people were arrested uh, all the way back on the flight log thing. Um, but he's already come out and said he wasn't on the flight log. That's made up bullshit. And so he, um, this guy on this podcast thing was saying that all of Hollywood was arrested in 2020. They went and arrested all of the people. And some of the people made deals. And he said, Sam Smith and Jim Carrey made deals. And Jim Carrey is playing Joe Biden. And uh, um, I don't remember. Because uh, he kept making like, you know, he's going down. He's just playing Joe Biden to light, light, lighten his sentence or something. And he said, and Sam Smith... And I don't know, was Sam Smith like Michael Buble or something before? Like, I don't know what this guy's style was. I know he's like devil worship music. So I don't know. Um, but that is, he's playing a part to show the devil worshiping in music or something. I'm not sure. I'm not, I didn't hear the whole podcast. I only heard this one part. But that's the kind of stuff to me. It's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, on the Jim Carrey thing, he was a whistleblower. I mean, he came right out on Kimmel and said, I'm here to be a whistleblower. And he started telling that stuff. Then his girlfriend, you know, is suicided. And then he's drugged through the media circus and being blamed and trying to destroy his reputation. So, and then he is getting lawsuited by these family members and stuff. So, I don't know. I, and then there was a whole thing about Cappy talking about when he was talking to him and, uh, that, uh, Jim Carrey was very upset and he was crying and, uh, that Cappy was trying to calm him down because I, I don't know what all these people have seen. You know, I would imagine it would be very scary. And then, you know, and who do you turn to? And when you see another person who is, um, you know, saying the same things as what you've seen and you'd want to talk to them. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know. But to me, I don't, I don't think that every single person in Hollywood has done all the bad things of what they're trying to say. I think that there's a lot of people who have done bad things. A lot of people who did really bad things, but there's a lot of people who didn't. So there's going to be some people who will come on the main stage, like uh, um, like if Jim Carrey is playing Joe Biden, if one, he's playing one of the Joe Bidens, then, you know, uh, there'll be some kind of reveal or something. So people will see, you know, he's been on the right side of uh, this whole situation. Like there will be some sort of uh, revealing like there's nothing where you have to sit there and keep trying to figure out because it's going to reveal itself like uh I wonder if they're even gonna go 
in and you know it's weird how they're not talking much about Tom like, that will come out later I would imagine because they got all this stuff to come out about Oprah and Rock and you see uh, those ones because everything fits together you know it's all about the story the storyline and how many people can be taken down on all these different storylines and so I mean Oprah is a perfect person I mean, she's uh, they're colonizing, buy, buying up all this land, and people are getting killed. Like, she's so, oh, God, she's horrible. <clears throat> but Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, like, there's some really bad ones. So, I mean, we still have a bunch of people who are going to be revealed through, I don't know, probably through different court things and stuff. But... Um, I, I just, I don't think that every person in Hollywood was arrested and that they're all bad. I think that there is a mix, just like there's a mix in all this stuff. People just don't realize how many people that are regular old citizens are about to go down and they're going to be faced with a death penalty. Like that's, uh, anyone who has done something to kids and I said that, I said that was in the executive orders, uh, but now it's starting, they're starting it. And even in Florida, they are trying to decide if they should go back and change some people's sentences uh, because now if they were already sentenced and they didn't get the death penalty and they just got whatever, 15 years, now they're saying, well, maybe we should go back and just just everybody who's done anything to kids is just uh, line them up. <laughs> it's not going to be good, but there's going to be people who are going to be having family members and shit. Like w these people are related to people. <laughs> like these people are here somewhere. Like all these people who are getting arrested and stuff have families and stuff. Like when there's 160 in one goddamn town being arrested, that's stuff. Uh, there's a lot of family members and shit that are, God, uh, humiliation and stuff. There's gonna be so much public humiliation. And uh, you gotta see uh, some of that stuff from past life stuff too. Like, uh, somebody who's getting totally publicly humiliated, it, uh, probably that they did some humiliation on somebody else. And so then they get to see what does it feel like? It's one thing to dish it out, but what does it feel like to receive it? So that's like what sort of souls have to go and do. It's like you got to be the disher and the receiver. You got to see both sides. So, you know, whatever side you're playing, you bet your ass you've done them all. That's just the way it is. You have to, that's what makes a well rounded soul. That's what makes a fully developed soul is all of the experiencing everything from all angles, all sides. And that is what relieves you from judgment is because you see what it is, you have compassion because you have experienced what it is that drives somebody to do the things they do. And uh, when you can tune into that part of yourself, then you can have compassion for others. You realize there's no reason to judge anybody. Like we can all be pushed into stealing we can all be pushed into doing these things it's you know it depends on how life happens it's what happens in your life and whatever you're pushed into doing it's you know it's all by your intention you know if you're just mindlessly going around just killing because you're just had a bad day then you know that's uh that's not a good thing for your soul <laughs> that's not a good thing if it you know uh, i can't say whatever all of the people who are in that group, what their soul learning plan thing, what's going on. It's like not for me to figure out. It's way beyond anything that I, it's beyond my pay grade. So it is, um, you know, it's, it, it, but that is where you've got to be in tune to yourself. And I think it just, it makes things easier when you just understand this world on a spiritual level. So you don't get caught up in so much of the misery and pain and suffering. And you don't, you don't get caught up in that idea of that it can happen to you. Well, it happened to them. It could happen to me. Because they really seem to base so much of that on 
that part of our psyche in uh, people's um, mental, but uh, it's so draining to go around all the time and be on guard for everything that happened to somebody could happen to you. No, the only thing that can happen to you is the things that are supposed to happen to you. The things that are supposed to happen to you are specifically designed just for you. They're not for anybody else. The things that happen to those people are specifically designed for those people. They just give us all this huge interference where we're running around thinking that we can, you know, if we put on our seatbelt, we won't die. If we put on this, we won't die. If we do this, if we follow these rules, if we do that, no, all that's bullshit. The only thing that's going to keep you from dying is it's not your day. When it's your day, you will go. It doesn't matter. If you're wearing a seatbelt. It doesn't matter if you're uh, 25 mask on. It doesn't matter what the hell. If it's your day, that's your day. That's the day you're going. And it's um, your script ran out. You got nothing else to do. Your time is up. You're, you're out of the game. You finished what you came to do. So you leave the game. And that's that's it. That's all there is to it. And, you know, here, how they've got people so twisted up in their minds and this whole thing about death and flesh and blood and it could happen any second. You got to be careful. Uh, you know, like we're all somehow keeping ourselves healthy until we get old. But then you've got all these people who are, don't even want to get old because they don't want to look ugly. And you got all these people, it's like, it's, it's just, it's mental. You got to see that. It is, it's all about us learning and growing what we're learning and growing from and how we're expanding ourselves. That's what we're doing here is these challenges to our own psyche, our own mental stability so that we can grow because you become stronger. You, your vibration becomes um, higher. You can tell when you start healing things, your vibration is becoming higher because you feel better you'll feel better you'll start looking better you'll uh you'll feel um uh there was like a few different things but you'll feel more in like alignment with yourself you'll feel like you're just letting things go things don't feel as much a burden doesn't feel as heavy you don't feel so much weight on your shoulders and you'll just feel lighter you feel brighter, you'll feel happier. So it's it's valuable to let shit go. There's no reason to hold on to shit. There's no reason to hold on to it. No matter what horrible things have happened to you, why hold on to them? Why hold on to the things that bother you? It, you know, um, yeah, it's a part of your story. It's a part of where you came from, but it isn't, it isn't all the story. You, so you've got to learn how to let go of these things. You know, and you can still hold on to them. Yeah, you can still, you know, I was uh, an abused child, you know, whose mom and dad were addicts and who, you know, whatever your story is, it's still your story. But you don't have to hold on to uh, the pain part. You got to get into the part of the healing, the champion yourself, to be the victor, to be like what you've overcome. Your Your story didn't hold you back. You overcame it. You became, you know, whoever it is that you, whatever the things you overcome, it's going to feel good to you. It doesn't have to feel good to anybody else. It's your, it's your, you championing you. It's your obstacles. It's the things you overcame. Those are you, the things you got to be proud of yourself. Be excited for yourself. Everything that you overcome, don't minimize it. Don't make it like it's no big deal. You know, you like especially when you can see how heavily programmed people are and stuff. Any of the things that you do where you're breaking programming and you are healing, letting go of old traumas and stuff, be proud of yourself. It's it's um it's really overcoming everything that they wanted you to be. They wanted you to be something different and everything that you overcome to become something more and something better is, uh, you know, it's a sharp kick in their teeth. Everything that you do to overcome, to become your best, that is, you know, their worst nightmare. So right there, you're doing so much, you know, you're doing so much to change the world just by changing yourself. 
and it's 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 simple stuff even though it's hard and it's challenging you know but it's a lot of it's very simple to go back in and you know to uh, when something triggers you when something bothers you to go step backward from it go backwards from the instance from the inst uh, the experience and stepping backward, asking yourself where you're going, how did you get there? Why are you feeling this way? And as you go backwards and asking yourself, trying to understand yourself, it will lead you to a place that it initiated the birth of the feeling. And when you can get to that birth of the feeling and you can see, you can let it go. You can be like, oh, you know, I, I'm holding on to this. Uh, I've made this into such a big, huge thing through my life. And it's held me back. You know, it's made me not trust people. It's made me angry. It's made me bitter. It's made me resentful. You know, and you can let all that stuff go. You can heal. Like, there's nothing wrong with healing. It doesn't matter if your, your parent kicked you every day and pissed on you and fed you garbage and you just feel like the most disgusting, dirty person in the world. And, you know, you deserved it anyways. I mean, with parents like that, you can't be much better. Like you have to go in and uh, see, like you've got to get yourself through that. Like, you know, your parents were broken, you know, who knows what broke them? Who knows what they went through, but they were broken and you endured some hard stuff. You endured some painful things but you know essentially it has turned you into um well i mean it can turn you into a mean bitter person uh it depends on how you express but it, it, you normally there's parts of you that are very uh sympathetic and have great compassion for others like you will find you know that you are uh, you know, very there for the underdog. You know, you want, want to do everything you can for other people to not feel pain. So there's a part of you that is a blessed part of you from your trauma. Those are the parts you want to focus on. You want to focus on the parts of you that became the loving, vulnerable parts of you that happened from the situation. And, you know, you can let go. You don't have to hold on to somebody who sexually abused you or physically abused you or emotionally abused you, verbally abused you. You know, you it doesn't make it so just because you hold on to it. It makes it so because you experienced it. And then, so now is the time to overcome the challenges of it. And so it depends on all of it, how you've held on to it, all of your experiences, but you can go into all the different ones and let them go. You know, there's all sorts of different ways. Like there's a lot of really good inner child work you can do. There's a lot of books about inner child work and you can, you know, take your, go in there with your memory of it as your adult, go in with the child and protect the child, and you can turn things around. There's all different ways that you can turn the things so you can feel more empowered, so you can feel better, so you don't feel so bad. But there's nothing wrong with forgiving the people that have done the worst things for you to you. Because if you don't forgive them, you're holding on to anger. You're holding on to bitterness. Those things will make you sick. You gotta let go of it, and on a soul level, you got you know you can you can realize that on a soul level, it, it's a very different experience than what you've experienced in the um, incarnation, in the level of the experience. But the um, so there's all different levels you can look at it. You know you can look at it on a much bigger picture of you know the whole thing with souls and you're playing parts and you come in and you know you've probably done some shitty things you probably did some shitty things to them and this could be your karma is coming back the balance is being reset 
So, uh, you know, it's never a good thing just to blame somebody else and just think, well, they're just evil. They're just bad. Like you just don't know what you've done in other lives and other existences and other storybooks to them. So it is, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just this rebalancing all the time. So, but you know, when they, bad things have happened and people get very caught up in it and feel really bad about themselves and stuff. So it's this journey to forgive, forgive, um, the people who have forsaken you, forgive yourself for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. I think there's people who uh, feel so bad about like their parents and stuff. It's like you chose your parents though, because you chose these, these things that are seem so hard to overcome. You wanted these challenges. You wanted to go through this. You want whatever it is, you chose it. All of the stuff. There's nothing that is, you're not forced into anything. Uh, that's, you know, you couldn't, I don't think you could just force a soul into um, a life. Like, I don't, I don't think you could force it. A soul can come in and, you know, maybe think it's going to fix something and get in here. And then it's just like right back to the same old shit. And it's like, God damn. I swear when you see these little babies and they're just trying to figure out the body. And especially, I, there's so many, I think, that they um, remember that they are trying to figure it out. Like my one little grandson who's 10 months old, he's just walking around now, climbing on everything. Uh, and my other one, but it's like they're so focused. They're focused on trying to use, make sounds and stuff. It's trippy. It's like all these um, babies, it seems like they remember like, okay, I just got to get through this part. I got to just remember how to start using this thing. I can, I can get it to sing to walk. I can get it to say words. I just got to remember how. <laughs> I just think, um, I don't know. I just think it's like a whole nother level coming in now of, um, memory of, uh, soul memory or something. So, um, it seemed like there was something else that I had wanted to say that I had seen, um, uh, something. My <laughs> eyes totally going blank, but anyways, let's see what time it is. 316. I just, uh, but I swear to God, like I fall asleep at like seven. And, but then it's like one o'clock. I'm just so uncomfortable. It's like, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable because I really got a routine now. Like at seven o'clock, lay down, like I'm going I'm to I'm watch a movie or something, but then I just put on the meditation music. So I lay there in two seconds, I'm asleep. And then always like at nine or 9.30, I'll wake up. I'll go in my bedroom and then at 1 or 1.30 and then I'm awake in my bedroom and then I'm back out here. So, uh, I don't know. I just want things to hurry up and start flipping more. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if anything is going on with Wall Street. I don't know how this shit gets drug out so long. No matter what that is going, though. I mean, all of this stuff is going. The money thing is going. However, they've got to drag it out and make it go public or whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's just as, um, God, it just is. <laughs> I just wish some things would just go fast and go just, you know, Wall Street would have just crashed on Monday. But whatever, they obviously have some plan. They don't need me to tell them what the plan is. And, uh... I, I I mean, uh, certain things you just don't see coming. Now, if they're going to put him in as the house speaker, and then is it going to be, he's just going to start pointing fingers? Like, how? I don't know what the hell drama we got. I, I just know the whole government's got to go down, the whole meta, everything's got to go down. And we got to start over. And so, however, however, I guess that whatever, you know, no matter how frustrating, this is one thing we got to remember, no matter how frustrating this is, no matter how it's just like, you know, you want to just scream your head off 
Like, what the fuck? Come on, hurry up. We're so fucking tired of this. We're sick of fucking being sick. We're sick of being broke. We're sick of uh, this whole energy. Um, but whatever it is, that the, how they're playing this out, this was run through these quantum computers. My stomach's going crazy, growling. So those, those parasites are like, come on, bitch. Um, uh, they, they ran all this through these quantum computers. This was all planned, how this was going to play out. They had to see, you know, all of this stuff was figured out. So whatever they're doing is supposedly going to keep it the most calm and the most people waking up, I guess. Uh, so it's just aggravating when you've been awake for a long time and you're just anxious. It's like, come on, come on, come on. Let's move it. Let's move it. I'm ready to get out there and fucking start traveling. <laughs> I'm ready to start. Um, uh, I'm ready for the money thing to go. I'm fucking ready to get in that goddamn med bed. It's like, fuck. So, I don't know. I, I don't know but if fucking any of the shit is going on. If anything, uh, I saw this one lady, bank lady and I was listening to her. She worked at the bank and she said... Right now, they have got so many um, fraud things going. She said it's crazy. All day long, she spends all her time doing fraud stuff. And that is what I've had with the bank, too, was fraud bullshit. And, um, oh, God, I'm sore. And then the, um, but she said it's really wacky. Like, um, and I'm, I mentioned it a while ago, but I probably haven't mentioned it in a while. But any of these things, any of these text messages, any of these weird emails and stuff, don't open them. They're all uh, some sort of scam. You don't open them. And, but anyway, so she said all these people are... Um, so this one big fraud that's going on is that they'll call or their message and they say, someone's trying to take money out of your account and we need you to call right away. So you call the number and then they start asking for all your information. They get all your information and then they take all your money. And so it's not really the bank. It's, it's a whole scam. But she said it's so wacky because they've got people like taking all their money out of their account, going and putting it in Bitcoin and holding it there because this is what these people are saying. that the, They've got a fraud on your account and you need to move all your money out of your account into this other one. And then once your account is free, we'll tell you and you can put your money back. And the people are just taking all their money and putting it into these accounts for these people for them. <laughs> it's wacky. She, this woman is, the bank lady is like, this is the weirdest thing. Why are people doing this stuff? But people are literally going and doing this. And so any of this stuff, to me, you just don't open it. All of the things, everything right now is they just are trying to get all of our money. It's all just fraud, 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 fraud. And they send, uh, like I get emails and texts and shit, uh, my package. They just need the delivery, you get all sorts of stuff. It's like, no, this is all fake. So don't open any of that shit. It's all fraud. And so that's the only banking thing that I had seen was that. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I am. I for me personally, I'm trusting that the debt has been wiped out and that the debt has been deemed illegal. Like those things are in, already happen, but that they're not going to unless you look into it. Unless you see for yourself, the media and stuff's not going to be telling everybody because we still have so many of the bad people in charge so it's not going to be just uh you know but that is where trump comes in where he keeps dropping things and saying things oh yeah and um i guess on the twitter too or x or whatever that um dan scavino he did some because his videos are always telling and um and then trump on truth social but i guess trump's back on twitter too but anyways there was something about the we're crossing the finish line so uh we're at the end 
or at the end or whatever's going to go down. And the money thing is going to go down. Like, we're definitely at the end of that. So, you know, because I know there's people out there like, well, you know, I want to stop paying this. I want to stop paying that. And it's, you, it's totally up to each person. And, and, and who knows what the fight will be. Like, I still don't know because all these people don't know if they're going to still come and try and fight with me about the house. But I know I've got the law on my side. And so, you know, I'll argue. But I don't know. I kind of feel like, I don't know. We'll see how this week goes. It's, it's already starting out so weird and creepy. It's just completely weird here. The weather's weird. It's totally still We're having all these weird storms everywhere. And there's still supposed to be something about 10-8. Um, See, I haven't, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think that there's people being called into the redemption centers and stuff. So, um, I, I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe people are getting, maybe they'll, they'll all start today. Maybe we'll all start getting calls and telling us to come in. I don't know. We just got to keep watching and see how things play. But it doesn't matter to me how it goes. I still know it's going. It's going to go. It's not, there's no, there's no rescuing this. There's no coming back from it. There's no fixing it. This is the end of it. So it's all going down. The bankers, the pervs, the, the medical, all of it. It's all going down. So, but each person has to decide for themselves what they're comfortable with. You know, I feel like it's pretty safe to stop paying some of the stuff, but I've paid the car the whole time. If I would have, and I was ready to stop paying that a long time ago, and that would have gotten taken because um, it's gone on so long. And if I would have not paid the house all that whole time, it would have probably already have gotten taken. So it is like this, it's a gamble. Whatever you do, and you just got to be ready to face your consequences. And you have, um, but you got to stand up for your human rights. And you got to, um, Stand for what feels right to you, you know, and this is all about us learning, you know, and maybe you are in fear more. And this is to help you learn about that, to help you see, to help you understand. So don't be hard on yourself on whatever any of the things are. It's all going to help you and you're going to learn and you're going to grow through all of it. So, you know, don't be hard on yourself on any of this stuff. If you're still paying right to the last second, if you paid your house payment this time and you didn't have to um, because it's all over with already, you know, don't be hard on yourself. It, it just, you, you, it's by your intention. You're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to take care of yourself, trying to take care of your family, trying to stay safe. You got to think about what's right for you, not any of this stuff. So see, it's all in you staying focused on your truth, your perspective, how you see things. And, and through all of this mush of how everybody is, what everybody's going through and everybody sees and all that, you stay focused on how you see things, what you see. Stay focused on your truth. So anyways, this wall light is killing my eyes. But I didn't go back and do another video yesterday. It was just, um, I had such a headache all day. It, this headache has been going for days and days. It just has got to be those fucking chemicals. And uh, it, it is the whole thing, too, is when you, you do this shit and then you start, oh, allergies, allergies, allergies. It's fucking no, it's poison, poison, poison. Ugh. So I, I don't know what the weather's going to be here. I don't know what's going to go on. I mean, they've got storms, fires, and shit going. So. Uh, this week is going to probably just keep going with more, more bullshit, more chaos, and more storms, but we've got to be like, we're at the finish line. Just, I just keep thinking that we're at the finish line. However, it's going to end. Yeah. This fucking shit is going to go down. So it is going down, but anyways, just do the whole thing. Keep working on you. Keep focusing on you and doing all of that you can to um evolve grow expand yourself through this use it to your benefit don't just sit back and be scared and 
uh, you know, use it, use this time so that you can grow and expand because it seems like a lot of people aren't, well, I think some people are doing it without even realizing that they're, the universe is just forcing them to have to see things. But anyways, just don't hide from things and don't, don't be scared. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.